Good morning, hello, good morning. As we as we emerge onto the main road. It's not even the road below the main road or the road below that. It's something like, you know, it hasn't even got a number this road. And as we come onto Preston Road, which I think might have a number, but I'm not sure. So, how are you? It's a bit squeaky, doesn't it? Get a bit of water on it. Ah, well. Stop! It's got a stone or something underneath the blade. What are the chances of that? So, Friday today, Friday morning, quite a nice Friday morning. The weather's going to show signs of sort of being a bit nicer, you know, which is good. I'm not going to bore you with a load of guff about how to cut the grass today. Had a few interesting cases in clinically. Had a guy in who was 50 years old and it was only the second time he visited the dentist. He's a Indian guy and he went last year because he had toothache and uh, they did a filling for him and then he's come back to see me because so uh, one of his teeth is split in half and believe it or not he's upper right five no uh, trauma no history of a blow uh, just literally the plate of cusp but just literally broken off I think just because he's, he's got a very hard bite you know he's just got, he's got a, a good chewing strength look at this monstrosity up here look they've actually put a roof over the top of a house A1 that's what I need get a roof over the top of my house and redo the roof I agree So, uh, so that was interesting. So technically, it wasn't his first visit to the dentist, stage fifty, but it was his second. I mean, and this guy, right? He's an educated guy. He works for a big firm, worldwide firm, based in America. Flies all over the world. Got fifteen hundred employees. Blah blah blah. And he's fairly senior in it. By by all of you know. He told me he'd come in to see me and got to fly off to America so with these jobs obviously it depends very much where the fracture line goes and in his case I think he was lucky I think it went uh, immediately palatal but usually these fracture lines they can go one of three ways they can go most frequently they go palatal and then um, uh, and, and down to the bone level because that's is the fulcrum for the fracture is the bone um, blatantly or they can go they could technically I suppose they could do the same buckley but they tend not to uh, they tend to more or less all be palatal and then um, I can't think why because I mean you know you've got um, contact haven't you in all excursions on your cusps we should do and then uh, So, and then the third one is where it's cracked vertically, which happened to her, and that tends to happen to molars, but where you get like the two buckle cusps go one way and the platelet cusp goes the other, especially if you've got an old NHS uh, amalgam MOD in it, which is using an alloy, which was, you know, obviously the cheapest alloy they could find. And as a result, it was uh, got terrible expansion and corrosion properties. So it tends to, over the years, crack the tooth by expanding so anyway but he was lucky no we just took off the platelet cusp for him and he went off to America yeah and then the other fascinating uh, uh, case I had which if you're a dentist not if you're not then what are you doing listening to this channel was um, a, a, a lady who's in her 70s and 
came in and said that she was having toothache from a lower left five, which was like a blackened stump. But in the in the ways that blackened stumps can be actually not bad teeth if you sort of spruce them up a bit. So um, anyway, we decided that we were going to take this black stump out. She didn't really want to save it. Um, and so, but she was on anticoagulants, so we had to write to the doctor, and the doctor charged her 35 quid for a letter, to, you know, some advice. And, uh, so she stopped her anticoagulants, and she came in, and then she came and she said, uh, actually, this bottom tooth now not hurting me anymore, but one of the top is. So I'm like, all right, well, let's have a look at the top one. So, look to the top one, and sure enough, that the top tooth was actually stopping her closing her mouth together. By which I mean that normally she had a normal way of closing her mouth, but because this top tooth had dropped down, she was sort of she was sort of biting like that, you know, just to get her teeth together in the best way possible. And I thought that's odd because, you know, even teeth lose teeth wisdom teeth they never erupt once you've got your teeth uh, through and your jaw bite established uh, then they should they erupt into line you know they don't come through and then come through another half an inch so that was very unusual so it turned out that this upper left tooth was um, not only was it over erupted it was quite mobile so then I had to decide whether it was mobile because it was over erupted and causing a lot of interference on the bite or whether it was mobile because it was periodontally involved and it, it, it seemed pretty obvious that it's the periodontally involved over erupted mobile situation and so um, so we ended up because she was taking the drugs um, I said to her, like, you know, we, I can't send you away and get you to start and then stop taking the drugs again. We'll have to take this top tooth out today. So we took the top tooth out and then uh, we then had to decide what we're going to do with this black and stuff down the bottom. So I said to her, well, you know, and she was like, oh, well, just take that out. And I said, well, first of all, it's not giving you any trouble. Secondly, you're not, you know, you're getting a bit short of chewing teeth and it might be um, a smart idea to save it. So the thing with bisphosphonates, they're drugs which um, sort of consolidate your bone, they harden your bone up. And anyone who's put on bisphosphonates is told to go to the dentist and get their teeth sorted out because a couple of years on bisphosphonates and you almost, you know, it can be quite difficult to extract teeth and, and also um, uh, you can get a lot of, uh, because there's a reduced blood supply to the bone when the bone starts hardening up and so you can get there's an increased uh, chance of uh, a failure to heal because of a failure there's a failure of the blood supply to the area and uh, in the worst case scenario you can get a situation where the thing just is is stare it's just bone and it's just staring at you the whole time and skin won't close over the top of it because it's all dead and uh, they get a thing called osteonecrosis, which is, uh, you know, an extreme, an extreme problem, but uh, it's a well-known uh, side effect of this bone tablet. And I think even now they won't let you have it for more than two years and they take you off for a year. It's almost too good, you know, it works too well. It turns your bone into marble. They ought to call it Medusalam. Or Gorgon, Gorgon, Gorgon <laughs> So, <coughs> so anyway, uh, <coughs> what we decided to do with this lower premolar was root fill it. It's a single rooted tooth. It was quite a sclerose. So we had to go down a long way to find the canal. <coughs> but. Um, But uh, we found it, and uh, you know, because it's a lower five, and we've got an electronic pulp—not um, electronic pulp tester, uh, uh, apex locator. Um, it was pretty uh, simple job to find out the length of the root, and then just drop a GP point down it. Happy days.
so uh, well, that's why I'd come in lately. That's a bit weird. Yeah. So, so there I was, right? I was going to do one extraction on this woman, and we ended up extracting a completely different tooth, and and root treating the tooth. No, I'm not going. I'm not going quickly on the junction of death. These cars, see this car here, they come past at 60, 70 miles an hour. So, it's like that thing you get printed on wing mirrors. Objects may appear closer than they seem, you know. Don't, you don't nip out in front of cars at that junction. Ah, oh, motorbikes. I've got a motorbike. I'll, uh, well, I've got a little scooter. I might start going into work on the scooter soon. When the weather warms up a bit. So, what was I saying? Yeah, so when we took this uh, back molar out, all of a sudden then our bike shifted back to normal. Which is really, you know, just weird. Well, I don't know. Unless as it over erupted, she just gradually moved her jaw out of the way, you know. A tremendous click in our left TMJ, and I've got a sneaking suspicion that uh, now we've taken that tooth out that that click might uh, resolve because it's only because she's not she's chewing without the uh, mandibular condyle in the fossa. So, but you know, that's not the only thing on my mind. We've uh, our uh, technician is now almost he's sort of semi retired. And he's going to be working for Bell Board Force, and so we're going to have to start looking at how to do uh, additions and relines and stuff like that. So he's promised to come in and show us. But the, problem, the trouble with promises like that is they never materialise. Uh, people say, "Oh yeah, don't you worry, I'll come back. I'll come in for a day and show you how to do it all." And then, of course, uh, they never do. So, we'll see. Maybe we'll just be a dentist that doesn't do dentures. You know, we might. You could, you could sell that to the public. You just tell them that you decided to specialise in advanced restorative work. And that they need to have their... I mean, it's not that there aren't, a, you know, dentists around that will very happily do the dentures. I'm sure they're licking their lips with uh, the thought that dentists can't get dental technicians to do the work now. That fan has come right in front of that lorry and slowed down. Look, Willow Landscapes, 01843 825519. I'm going to ring you up and say what a bloody terrible driver you are. So um, yeah, so what I've done is I've put in, because we, we, um, we've got um, a grinder, you know, a plaster grinder, and we rehabilitated it and fixed it and unblocked it and decoked it and got it, got it working quite well now. And, um, but the girls don't like having it on the sink in the kitchen, obviously, because it makes a mess. So I bought a little commercial sink and uh, double sink on a, on a stand, you know. And um, the only thing I haven't done, I've plumbed in the water, so we've got water, but the drain comes out into a bowl at the moment, so I need to drain, put some pipe in to drain it into the mains. And uh, that one shouldn't be too tricky. It's just like, with everything, it's just about finding the time, you know, to do it. We did have a plumber who once said he was going to do it for 300 quid. But, um, he didn't ring up and said he couldn't, you know, he couldn't do it. He said he could do it and then he said he put his shoulder out down the gym and he couldn't do it. So I'm like, okay, fine. 
I don't, honestly, three three hundred pounds for just connecting the sink waste to to a drain that's literally four feet away. That's already got the connector on it to connect into it. Uh, it's um, you know, uh, it's taking the piss. So I said to him, like, you know, it's a shame. What a shame. Your shoulders stop you doing the job. Now I'm going to have to force myself to go down screw fix and spend thirty quid on the on the bits. You know, which any idiot could put together. So I'll do that this afternoon because we don't work Friday afternoons. So that'll be quite good. So we're going to. So we've effectively we've turned one of our units. One of, the, one of the units has got two surgeries in it and the sterilisation area and reception. And then the other unit is going to have staff area, uh, plaster area, you know, wet, wet area for plaster, pouring up and plastering. And then a, a, separately a dry area for um, setting up dentures and uh, doing all the other stuff. And um, then, then it's got an office and an x-ray area. So all in all, that's not too bad, actually. That's not bad. That's, that's pretty good utilization of space of two, two industrial units. Oh, you're a bit faster. Yeah, poor old Manston. Oh, look, there's a little bloke there. Oh, I don't believe he's trying to cut all that grass with a tiny little 18-inch ride-on mower. Are you kidding me? So, one one technique which I'll share, which I find works really well and deserves to be more widely known, is when you get children in. Now we don't charge for children under eleven. This is because of some this 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 is requirement that you know if you take people on the NHS, you've got to do all the treatment on the NHS. And it's also implied that if you take one member of the family on on the NHS, then really there's no reason why you shouldn't be taking the whole family on on the NHS. But the um, the problem was, and I oh, I found this out 20 years ago, was if you say to people like you know we're we're a private practice, they'll say, well, I don't mind too much having to go private because I think obviously I think it's inevitable, but um, I don't see why I should pay probably for the kids because the kids are entitled to free dentistry so uh, so what used to happen was that the um, dentist used to say well look if you come and see me privately and I'll see the children on the NHS so well, bearing in mind that there wasn't really there's never much to do with cheers you know so and the parents would say, well, what, can't you take me on the NHS as well? And they were like, no, adults private, kids NHS. And then that's why we never really got many children in the private sector, because of this uh, feeling amongst the patients that, you know, of they don't mind. They do mind, but I mean, you know, but they can see why they might have to go private but they don't see why the children should have to go private that that is really that's the that's the end of the you know that's the beyond the pale so what we did was we started saying that we will see children up to 11 free of charge uh, and and it really is just to encourage them to come in you know and what we do is we we stain their teeth up we give them a toothbrush pack, blah 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 but most of all, we bang home the importance of uh, diet. 
avoiding cakes and biscuits and sweets. So when you've got children coming in, usually it's a couple of kids, and what you do is you uh, immediately tell them, it's a sort of, you're gonna have a sort of a role play, that you need one of them to be the patient and one of them to be the dentist. And then they can pretty quickly, once they get over the shop, where it's not, you know, because their mother spent all morning saying, you will do what you're told. When you're in the dentist, don't you embarrass me. If I tell you to get in the chair, you get in the chair and open your mouth. So they're wondering what the hell's going on. So when they get in and you say, right, okay, now I need one of you to be the dentist and one of you to be the patient, they're like, oh, that, this sounds like it might be a bit of fun. You know, I've always wanted to be a dentist. So you give, whichever one of them's chosen to be the dentist, you give them a mirror, your mirror, and then you tell them to show the other one into the chair and then show them how to press the buttons and lean the other one back, etc. And then while you're putting your gloves on, you can say, just have a gentle look around inside and see if you can see any black dots. So, uh, you know, sure enough, they have a little look and by then they're giggling and the other one's lying on his back with his mouth open, whatever. And then um, you can come around the nurse's side and then say, uh, did you find any dots, you know? And then they say, yeah, I did, I see this, I see this. And um, anyway, you take it from there and then at half time you swap ends. And you say, right now it's your turn to be the patient and it's your turn to be the dentist. And in this way, you can chart their kid's tea. And also by borrowing the mirror off the the child just have a quick look around and see what the general state is and do disclosing and uh, then you get them to say who they think is the best brusher and etc etc and they come away from the appointment having had a really good time you know much better than the sort of you know you're you are going to get in the chair and mr watson's going to check your teeth uh, so uh, and, th and they actually look forward to coming in if you do it like that now, I know it takes a little bit longer to do it like that, but, you know, if you want to get a reputation as a really, really good dentist, um, who's good with kids, then that's just a technique I would recommend. Because then you're not the dentist, are you? So you're not the frightening figure of the dentist. You're the, you're the teacher, you're the play facilitator. You're the one who says, here, I'll take that mirror, go and you be the dentist, you know, and they, and they love that. All right, there we are. So there's a bit more clinical for you today and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.